The murder of Brianna Gay is a major talking point in the UK right now. Any murder of an innocent teenage girl will grab headlines, but this one is particularly grim and triggering for a lot of people. Brianna was transgender, and it appears that her gender identity and self-expression played a big role in her death. Two teenagers have just received a guilty verdict for her murder and are due to receive their sentence soon. Today's video takes us into the heartbreaking details of the crime scene and the plot to kill Brianna. This was a premeditated attack with a desire to see her suffer. We will also look at the relationships between Brianna and her killers. Then there is the way the police downplayed any allegations of transphobia during the murder investigation. Violent crimes like this are not uncommon in the UK. However, as our subscribers know, we wouldn't be covering this if there wasn't an even darker side to the story. If you aren't a subscriber yet, you can click that button and hit that notification bell to avoid missing our stories. This is an emotive true crime case that will stir up strong emotions and opinions. Many feel outraged by these heartless actions. They want justice and wider societal changes to support transgender people. Others focus on the fact that these kids were intent on killing no matter the target. We want to hear from you with your views, especially with the revelation that we may learn the killer's names. Should the court waive their right to anonymity to make a point about this extreme transphobic crime? Or should the teens maintain their protection in case of retributions from the transgender community and their allies? The decision to take a life is one that the majority of us cannot comprehend. The notion that it would be fun to commit murder and see what it is like suggests that the life in question is somehow less important or worthy. That's what happened when a pair of teenagers in England chose to murder their classmate. They saw their perfect target in Brianna Gay and struck in broad daylight. At the time of recording, they face serious repercussions and have a nation outraged at their true motive. Before we get into more details with today's true crime story, we need to put out a content warning. This murder case deals with a hate crime committed against a transgender teenager. Therefore, we're going to talk about the transphobic motivation behind the attack and some of the language used by those involved. We appreciate this could be triggering to any transgender and non-binary people dealing with bigotry in their own lives. We feel it is important to share this heartbreaking story so that the world sees the facts of the case. It will help open up discussions and raise awareness of transphobia in the UK and across the world. We urge you to keep watching to the end to appreciate the full brutality of this crime and see the depths of the twisted mindset that caused the attack. You will be shocked at the way these teenage murderers talked about their classmate before deciding to kill her. Who was Brianna Gay? Brianna Gay was a bright and beautiful young girl in the prime of her teenage life. That was until two peers targeted and murdered her close to her home near Warrington. Brianna was transgender and outwardly living as a girl since the age of 14, having transitioned socially but not medically. She had accepted her true self and began dressing in female-centric clothing and using feminine makeup and hairstyles. She was out to her school and apparently well accepted by friends and family. Her mother was highly supportive of the transition because she saw how happy it made her. Brianna was often happy in herself and had a bubbly personality at home and with friends. She was a keen part of the TikTok generation and wanted to become TikTok famous, like so many other girls her age. Unfortunately, she also dealt with some mental health issues, such as anxiety and depression. She was in a balancing act, all too familiar to any 16-year-old trying to self-express and fit in. How was Brianna Gay murdered? Brianna died when two teenagers, one of whom was close to Brianna, decided to stab her in a local park. The pair lured her to Colcheth Linear Park, near their home in Warrington, to meet up. Brianna texted her mother while traveling on the bus there alone, saying she was a little nervous about it. The social anxiety was kicking in, but neither could have had any idea what was to come. Soon after she met the other teens, they stabbed her out in broad daylight. It was a shocking and intense murder, and the choice of crime scene is hard to understand. Why did they commit such a violent act when there was such a strong risk of being caught? The teens stabbed Brianna 28 times in total with a large hunting knife. The lacerations were so severe that they caused significant damage to her organs and bones. They stabbed her repeatedly across the body, including the head and chest, giving her no chance of survival. The attack only stopped when another couple came by walking their dog. These witnesses saw the pair by the trees with what they originally thought was another dog. After the teens took off, they saw what had happened. 
The emergency services soon arrived, but there was nothing they could do. They pronounced Brianna dead at the scene. What makes this all even more heartbreaking is that this wasn't the first time they had tried to kill Brianna, although she wasn't aware of that fact. Shortly before the murder, on January 23rd, one culprit saw an opportunity. She took advantage of Brianna's poor mental health and used it against her. The plan was to give Brianna an overdose of ibuprofen tablets. She messaged her male accomplice, saying it was easy because people already know she is depressed, and it would be seen as a suicide attempt. However, the plan failed when Brianna vomited up the drugs, and they didn't take effect. She continued, For some reason, she has a high tolerance. Adding the amount given should have been enough to kill her. Brianna's mother confirmed she had been sick at the time in question. Brianna was larger than life. She was funny, witty, and fearless. We miss Brianna so much, and our house feels empty without her laughter. To know how scared my usually fearless child must have been when she was alone in that park with someone that she called her friend will haunt me forever. Prior to the trial, I had moments where I felt sorry for the defendants because they had ruined their own lives as well as ours. But now knowing the true nature and seeing neither display an ounce of remorse for what they have done to Brianna, I have lost all sympathy that I may have previously had for them. And I am glad that they will spend many years in prison and away from society. It's impossible to put into words how the murder of my child has affected me. I never stopped loving her and I never will. And when she was little, I remember the faces she would pull to make me laugh. A cheeky giggle, funny dances are engraved in my memory. I knew she was going to be a star, and the amount of support she received from the followers on TikTok proved this. She shared her TikTok videos with me all the time, and I was so proud of what she could do. Show me how she would do her makeup. She had such an amazing talent, and I enjoyed sharing this with family and friends. I look into her eyes, and they shine back at me. And I know she was, and I know she was a beautiful girl to be proud of. I hate how her life has been brutally taken away from her, and she's been deprived of the life she wanted to live. It's difficult to comprehend how some people can do these vile things in the world and don't understand how cruel and heartbreaking their actions can be. The impact on Brianna's death has not just affected me as her father, but also my whole family. My heart bleeds every day for Brianna, and this will never go away. And the amount of guilt I can, and the amount of guilt I have can sometimes be unbearable. But I will ensure her memory lives on in my thoughts and dreams. Who committed the murder of Brianna Gay? The two teenage suspects in this case have no known names at the time of writing this script. They are simply known as Girl X and Boy Y. Girl X turns out to have been an acquaintance of Brianna's from school. Reports state that they were friendly for a while and had a trusting relationship. However, it wasn't long before Girl X's fascination with Brianna became twisted and she abused that trust. Boy Y was a good friend of Girl X, but apparently had no connection with Brianna. All he knew of Brianna came from what he saw in messages about her from Girl X. He formed opinions strong enough to incite murder. While the two teens were very close before the murder, chatting openly about their social lives, this shifted after the crime. They threw blame at each other. Boy Y insisted that Girl X deserved the blame, and that she had started stabbing Brianna while he was busy urinating against a tree. The pair were quickly identified after CCTV caught them leaving the scene of the crime. The knife used in the attack, which belonged to Boy Y, was found in his possession during the murder investigation. Once the police informed Boy E that they had found Brianna's blood on the knife and his cloth as, he stopped communicating verbally. In fact, he has been close to Mutie ever since. He wouldn't talk to the police or court, and was even given the chance to give evidence through a text messaging system. Maybe this was a form of shock and terror at the realization his actions had caught up with him. Maybe it was a ploy to try not to incriminate himself further. 
what motivated the murder of Brianna Gay. Some people looking at this case for the first time may assume these were two kids acting out and picking a random target. That isn't the case. There was a deliberate plan to attack Brianna, and it is clear that their ignorance and bigotry played a big part in it. The teens either didn't understand what it meant for Brianna to be transgender or feigned confusion as a means to demean her. The latter seems likely when looking at some of the messages sent between the pair. They sometimes referred to Brianna as it. To them, Brianna was neither male nor female, and perhaps less than human. They saw her as a curiosity and a freak. There was a fascination about her that suggests a deeper desire to learn. Yet, rather than simply engage in healthy conversation and try to relate to Brianna, they speculated and made jokes behind her back. Despite this, the police originally ruled out transphobia as a leading motivation for this murder. They cited the fact that the pair had already considered killing other students at their school, all cisgender males. They believed that Brianna was just the next in line and that her gender had nothing to do with it. If it hadn't been her, it would have been someone else. The problem with this is that the messages between girl X and boy Y do focus on Brianna's gender and physical appearance. Girl X often mentioned that Brianna was attractive and felt less pretty by comparison. The messages suggest some jealousy and perhaps discomfort over the idea that this transgender girl looked prettier than her, a cisgender girl. She wrote that she wanted to take one of Brianna's pretty eyes as a trophy. It was as though she wanted to punish her for daring to be who she was. Boy X, meanwhile, said he wanted to see if it will scream like a man or a girl. Later he said, really, all I want to see is what size dick it had. Again. There is a level of discomfort here and a need for superiority. Ignorance and hatred in public schools. This case is heartbreaking for so many reasons. The actions of the two teenagers play a large role in that pain. This is because of the violence inflicted at the crime scene and the way they spoke about their victim. However, there are more people to blame here. Teenagers are a product of their environment and the information fed to them at home, at school, and through social media. The rampant hatred expressed towards trans and non-binary people in the media and online makes it easy for children to fall in line with the trend. They hear that those whose gender doesn't align with their sex allocated at birth are mentally ill and that those supporting them are predators. Therefore, it is easy for impressionable youth to feel validated in their actions. For decades, UK schools weren't allowed to discuss other gender identities or sexualities under Section 28. Kids questioning their identity either forced themselves to conform, lived in secret, or came out to abuse and mistrust. When that ended, kids like Brianna were more free to be their authentic selves. Many teachers now support children in social transition and encourage learning and acceptance. Yet, guidelines issued in the last few days could erase all that, pushing people deeper into repression and self-hatred. They could fuel further bullying, violent attacks, and even future murders. Teachers are now encouraged to disregard preferred pronouns and enforce segregation on biological grounds. Kids like Brianna will end up isolated and treated as though confused or acting act for attention. The dehumanizing approach of government legislation trickles down to rhetoric and public discourse. Transphobia then becomes the norm, much like homophobia in the 1980s. The verdict of the Brianna Gay murder trial. The trial of girl X and boy Y at Manchester Crown Court found them both guilty of murder. Regardless of who had started the attack or delivered the fatal blow, both were active in the murder and the plot to kill Brianna. It took four hours and 40 minutes for the jury to deliver that verdict. The pair will not receive their sentence until January, as the court needs to be sure of the minimum tariff they can serve. However, she warned them that they were likely to receive full life sentences in jail. An interesting development shortly after the guilty verdict was the decision to waive the anonymity of the two teenagers. This is an unusual move for the UK court system. The law means that juvenile suspects receive some protection to hide their identity. This makes things easier if found not guilty and when rehabilitating after their release. This doesn't always go down well with the public, who want to see teens named and shamed, especially for a brutal murder case like this. Others are happy they don't know their names because of the impact this has on their legacy. It is easier to remember a murderer and give them the fame they crave when they have a name.
Some people want to let girl X and boy Y disappear into the prison system and focus on remembering Brianna for who she was instead. Learning from the Brianna Gay Tragedy This is a story that many in the UK will remember for a long time. It could prove to be a pivotal moment in the justice system at a time when transphobia and gender-related issues are so influential in society. Many will continue to insist that Brianna's death had nothing to do with gender. It is quite possible that girl X and boy Y would have killed a different target if she declined to meet them. There was a desire to kill they may have been stronger than any hatred towards Brianna. However, the language in the messages and the motivation to see Brianna suffer are clear. They didn't see her as an equal and were happy to kill her to satisfy their curiosity over what it meant to be transgender. An important lesson we can take away from this is that we can't underestimate bigotry. We have to see the way that ignorance and fear of those of different genders and sexualities influence people. There are too many violent attacks on people for simply not fitting into cultural norms and daring to live their authentic lives. Until attitudes and policies change for the better, there is still the risk of another teenager like Brianna experiencing a similar fate. We know this one was tough for many people and will raise some strong emotions. We still want to hear from you about this case and your thoughts on how the police handled it. How do you feel about the teens being named in the future? Is this a positive step to help shame a couple of transphobic killers and show that their kind is not welcome in society? Or is it better to retain their anonymity to protect them from retribution in the future? Thanks for taking the time to watch today's video. Don't forget to give us a like if you appreciate us covering this story. See you soon with another true crime murder case to deliberate on.